This is the San Lorenzo SL120A, and that A is quite important. I'm going to take you on board and show you why, but also you want to see this because it is absolutely gorgeous. Come and take this in with me. It's a thing of beauty. We're going to board via the passerelle. There's a huge amount of areas to show you on here. So we're going to keep moving reasonably quickly because we're at a boat show. There's a lot going on, but they very kindly granted us access all areas, which is fantastic. So we're going to start here in the cockpit and then we're going to head on through to the main saloon. Now, the A in asymmetric means that you have a side deck over on the starboard side here, but you don't have one on the port side over here. Let me show you. You can see that is straight down the outside. So, the benefit of that is just acres of space. Look how beamy this is. It is vast. Absolutely stunning. We'll head on inside. And I say we will keep moving because there's a lot to take in, but look at the sheer footprint there. It's incredible. And the other thing that you have here is you have a balcony on this side. So you've got this side opening doors. This chap's washing the boat next door to us. There we go. So that again, a lovely area. You can imagine how this folds up flush when you're not using it. And in fact, another thing worth mentioning is the fact that that bulkhead there will go out and drop down so you have clear, uninterrupted views. And I can show you that actually, because if we go back to where this chat's cleaning the boat, you can see they've done exactly that on this one where he's standing now. That's the section that comes out and drops down to grant you that visibility. Love the seating in here as well. It's really beautiful. Okay, we are going to press on. We're going to take in the lower deck, first of all. And we access that over here. Now, she's a five-cabin layout. So the four guest cabins are all down on this lower deck. And another thing we have, this is the first for Aquaholic. This is the lift. This takes you from here up to the main deck. I have actually locked it off the boat show to stop people playing with it. But, uh, so we couldn't come down on that, which was a shame. But yeah, that's what that is. So guest cabin here. And you've got, of course, storage across in places like this. And an ensuite over here. All beautifully done. I love all this. It's so nice all the way through. And these doors, these lovely thick doors. And I do like the woodwork in here. It's very subtle. It's very nicely done, very well chosen. So we'll come out through here. I'm going to show you the two aft ones next. And then we'll finish it off with the fourth one, because that's quite an interesting one. Well, they're all interesting, of course, but it's, the other one's a little bit different. So another one here, double, as you can see. These are a little bit larger. And then we can come through here. These are pocket doors, so you can slide a door across here to close that off. But then you also have this for privacy for the toilet. So that, of course, you can then still use this area. And we'll head around again, little dressing area, like so. Wardrobes across here. The one on the other side then, very similar. dressing area again, and exactly the same pocket door that slides across, loo on one side, shower on the other. But I want to show you this fourth cabin, because what they've done on this particular vessel, let me sneak on round, is they've left this as a day space. So you could have this as an office, you could have it as a little cinema room, you could have it for kids to come and mess around in, but you can make this into the fourth bedroom if you need it. So as I say, it is a four cabin layout down here, plus the owner's cabin further up. But the way they've done this, I think, is great because it's just such a versatile area. Unless you're regularly wanting to use all five cabins, this makes an awful lot of sense. Heads in here and shower back here. So it's got all the facilities of a proper cabin because that's exactly what it is. It's just been laid out like this to give a great little den. I'd have this as an office. It'd be fantastic. Talk about home working. Let's go a bit further. So we're going to come back out of here, back past the lift. And uh, oh, I'll just show you this, actually, as we're going past. This is just storage areas.
for your towels and all that kind of stuff along there. Okay, back out through here. Now what we're going to do this time is head forward again. The day heads is here. And then there's a powered door here. It's been locked open for the show for the minute, but normally you just wave your hand across this and it powers across because this is the owner cabin. Absolutely huge. This is an owner's boat, so I'm not going to go into too many cupboards and things, but this is the dressing area in here. You've got a nice little desk or makeup space or whatever you want to use that for. And then you have this. Now there are two screens in here. There's a big screen up here in behind the mirror, which is hidden unless you're actually using it. That pop-up screen there, the only uses that with a computer. So he likes to have the big screen. So that's not actually for displaying films or whatever. That's for him to use when he's using this as an office. And then, as you'd expect, a magnificent ensuite. Fantastic. Now the other thing that this cabin has, which is absolutely lovely, let's just pause for a moment, take it all in. You'll notice there's a door here. Let's head on around this way. And as we get out through here, there's another door on the outside. So you've got one here and then this really heavy duty door, as you can see just there. So you've got real good integrity there when those are closed and you're out at sea. But then if those open, You've got brilliant access out to a private area for the owner, right up here on the bow. Very discreet, tucked away, loads of space. So you can come out here in the morning if you want to. The anchor winches are hidden underneath here, so it doubles up as a working area when the boat's being moored or anchored. But isn't that beautiful? And the lovely idea of having that exclusive to the owner. I think that's brilliant. And again, that's kind of able to be done because you don't have the side deck down this side so this whole thing can come right across you can see in fact the side deck instead runs over the top and down that way we'll head this way because you can access this from here as well so if you come out here for a, a drink in the morning coffee whatever you can then head back this way to go and talk to the captain you've got another terrific day space up here that then takes you down to the side deck on the starboard side and if we go across here what this one does as I mentioned it's raised up runs all the way back here and now we have direct access to the flybridge how neat is that so we're now right at the top of the boat we've got this huge hard top with these slats that open freestanding furniture right at the back that takes you back down to the cockpit where we came in. That's beautiful, isn't it? I love this traditional blue and white. It's so classy. It's absolutely timeless and it's a proper super yacht feel. <laughs> it's just a stupid thing to say because it's a proper super yacht. Of course, it's got a proper super yacht feel. Sorry, I'm a little giddy on this one. I just think it's just beautiful. Let's head forward again. Now, this is quite a nice touch. This area here has got the usual bits and pieces in it. So your ice maker, for example, storage, there's a fridge over there. And this one then lifts up and that gives you your uh, barbecue and a skillet, I think that other thing is called. But this is quite interesting because this one doesn't tilt. What this one does is if we can pull this fella here, that's gonna be quite tricky with holding a GoPro, it's a two-handed job, there we go. And now that slides, does two things. First of all, it gives you the sink, like that. Of course, that just then lifts up as so. But also then you've got a really lovely little breakfast bar on the end. Put a couple of stools around there. <laughs> what a wonderful place to sit and take in the view and have a bit of breakfast. It's very nifty. Let's put that back. We need to release that catch again.
Nice. And we will head forward. Dining area up on the flybridge. That's the door that we came through. Some great seating areas up here. And you can actually drive the boat from up here as well. So you do have a flybridge helm position. With that kind of a view, it's vast, isn't it? I mean, look at that. You can really get a sense of the scale from up here. Plenty still to show you. Let's go down into here because this is the wheelhouse. So this is where you helm the boat from. They've opted to go for a leaning post on this one rather than the chair, of course, you can have whatever you want there. It's important to remember this kind of boat, you know, when you're manoeuvring, you're stood up. When you're out at sea, you're an autopilot, you don't sit and drive it like a car. So that kind of thing, you better just stand there and just keep an eye on everything is absolutely ideal. You've got all your screens across here. These, as you can see, are running closed circuit TV. You've got navigation, you've got the ship systems over on that one. And all the usual bits and pieces, the throttles, the ship to shore. And so forth. Plenty more still to see, like this little desk area back here, that's nice. So we'll go down again and we'll start taking a look at some of the crew domains because obviously that is one of them. But if we carry on down from here, now you can see we're back to the, uh, the main deck that way. But this time we're going to turn this way because this is the galley area, big wine cooler as we go in. And then this wonderful area here. Fantastic. We'll head on round because this is the crew area down here. Now this is in use, but they have cleared a couple of cabins for us to have a look at. Okay, so as we head on down here, what you've got is the crew mess area. So they have their own facilities, so the microwave and the coffee maker and all that kind of thing. Now there are four crew cabins down here. I'm not going to show them all because they're in use, but they've cleared a couple of them so that we can have a look. So this one here is the captain's cabin. And if we have a look behind, that has the ensuite with a separate shower. And if we head forward a bit further, we will find this one here. So they've opened a couple of them so we can see how these look. So the other three are like this. They have the bunks in. You've got like a little drop down desk area there if you want it. There's storage in places like this. And as I say, I'm not going to show you too much of it. This is very much a lived in area by the crew at the moment. But there's also, again, these all have the proper en suites with the separate shower areas. And look at the quality of the woodwork and everything down here is exactly the same as it is in the guest areas. They just put a bit more hard wearing floor for obvious reasons. The other thing that we have down here, so another cabin there, so there's four in total, and then up here, the laundry. And finally then, there's a big storage area up here, but also what you have is another route out. So that takes you straight up to deck level. So there's ever a problem that you need to get out, you couldn't go the other way. And that's the way out. <laughs> and you also keep the birthday balloons in here. One of the crews just had a birthday apparently. Fantastic. And so the last area to show you is the engine space. We need to go back out for that. We'll come back up here. There we go. And we'll loop around. Hi. Thank you so much. Thank you. And this time we're going to go back out through here. We can pass that lovely balcony. And we will loop our way through the cockpit. And the engine room access is here. That takes you back up to that sun deck flybridge area, incidentally, up there. You can see the hard top. Okay, so. These are all the control panels for the systems. 
So yeah, 240 volt DC systems, your AC systems, all that kind of stuff is down here. And around here is the engine space. Now what we have in here is a pair of MTU 2000 series engines. They're 2,600 horsepower each and they're giving this one about 25 knots. She's no slouch and she cruises then at about 18 knots very comfortably but if you really want to get the range out of her drop it down to 12 and you've got 1,200 miles of range. So it just depends of course as ever with these things how you want to use the boat. You want to go fast you're going to burn more fuel. But it's exactly the kind of super yacht engine you'd expect. Everything is immaculate. Everything's easy to get to. All the systems over here, for example. And we head on around to the generator here. That's one of two. And more engineering systems back here. This <laughs> is just immaculate, isn't it? Beautiful absolutely beautiful so that is actually not quite it there is one more space to show you we're going to finish up at the beach club so let's head back out of here make our way back up let's just close that one over and this time we'll go this way go and take in the beach club here we go so I'll explain to you how this works because it's actually quite a neat area this is the transom of the yacht so this cantilevers up like that against the back so you have completely watertight integrity there of course when you're underway drop it down and you've got this fabulous terrace literally right out across the water and then as we step down again there's this beautiful area down inside here let's go right on in and you've got a side balcony that drops, exactly the same kind of deal. That's normally when you're underway, vertical against the side, flush and uh, completely, obviously, a watertight and integral. But drop it down, a lovely little cosy area right above the water. How nice is that? In fact, you can sit here and you can look up the side of your yacht. Stunning, isn't it? And then in here, ice maker, fridge, and a sink. Now, you might be wondering at this point, that's all great, what do you do about a tender? This is where this gets clever, because if you move this freestanding furniture over to this side, there is a single point lift crane here that goes all the way out. It extends pretty much to where that lady sat there. You then lift the tender up. It'll take up to a 565 Williams. So you get a really decent sized tender in here. Lift it, swing it, and then it powers in really easily into this space. And that's why this is here. If we have a little look through, you can see that's where the nose of it would go. And that's how you get your tender in. And then of course, everything closes up. There's another side balcony over there. Close everything up, drop the back down, and your tender is in its own garage. There are chocks that go into these sections here. So that supports it, tender sits across there, job done. Just brilliant, so versatile and so lovely. And that, I'm gonna go and stand out here, I think. Is that, massive thanks to San Lorenzo for organizing that tour, I'm really, pleased to have had a look at that one and really thrilled to have brought it to you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments, but I think that's something very special indeed, and I hope you agree. We'll catch you on another one of these very soon. Stay tuned. Lots more great stuff coming. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah.